Hello and welcome to an introduction to HTML. This is CSCE 242 at the University of South Carolina. My name is Jose Vidal and uh, at this link right here uh, you can find the slides that I'm going to be using for today's talk. So let's get right down to it. Uh, HTML, you probably know by now that HTML is how we represent uh, stuff on the web. You can see this page that we're looking at here is uh, actually an HTML page. Right? You can see this is the browser. I'm using Firefox. Here's the URL. Uh, that's where this talk resides. You can see the title is in large blue letters and uh, CSC242 is in boldface, uh, also large and uh, my name is a hyperlink to my web page and uh, this text here is smaller and here we have a list, we have two bullet points and uh, here we have another list, an enumerated list and, uh, and a nested enumerated list within that. So those are all you know, different ways to represent text, right? Uh, if we go over here under view page source, uh, we can see the HTML that produced this page, right? So this is what HTML looks like. Uh, and you can see it goes on for a little bit. And uh, this is what we're going to be learning about today. Okay, so that's a little bit complicated HTML. Let's start with a simpler example. So here is an example, a uh, simpler example of an HTML page. Um, this whole thing here, from this line here, doc type, all the way to uh, right down here, the end of the HTML, that's uh, a full complete HTML page. And uh, when you put it up, it's going to look like this. Right, so this is how it looks like. Uh, now, just to convince you of that, I'm going to do this. I'm going to select all this, and you should probably do this at home too. And uh, add it here. I'm running uh, the programmer's notepad. This is a little application, uh, an editor uh, for various files, and it's very nice for programmers. Um, so you see I just cut and pasted everything there and th one of the things this program does is it uh, colorizes the tags. So you see the tags are in blue, the attributes are in this cyan color, uh, the values are in purple, comments are in green, text is in black, etc. Uh, so that helps you see how the document is structured. And I'm going to save this now, file save, uh, test. I'm going to replace that old test and uh, I'm going to go back to the browser and uh, open open that file test over there. And you see, there it is. So this is what it looks like, right? And uh, once again, I can go view page source and view the actual uh, source code on the HTML for that page. Okay, so this is that. Okay. So now let's look at this uh, a little more detail. Um, I'm going to go back here and um, see you have the HTML. We have uh, the first thing is the document type. Right? So you can see there document type, HTML, and then some other stuff. Uh, what this line does it, is it tells the browser that uh, hey, this is going to be an HTML document that satisfies, you know, HTML 4.1 uh, spec specification. Uh, so basically, you just kind of cut and paste this uh, into every HTML document. Then after that, you're going to start with an HTML tag like this one. Uh, so it just says less than or equal HTML greater than or equal or you know angle bracket HTML angle bracket and then you'll notice that that one is matched at the end with uh, a similar uh, end HTML tag right so it's angle bracket slash HTML and so that's the first thing you notice that in HTML all the tags come in pairs you have HTML and HTML down here 
Uh, then after that there's a head tag followed by a close head tag. And you see a body tag followed by a close body tag or an end body tag slash body. And that, that is the basic structure that you always want to follow, right? So everything, all these tags come in pairs, right? Mostly. Uh, except for when they don't. Right? So here's an example uh, of the meta tag. We have meta, I'm go bracket, and then there is no end meta, but what there is instead is the closing angle bracket has a slash right before it. You see that? So that is the same as saying meta, whatever, and then slash meta. So you can, uh, if you don't want to put anything in between, uh, so if you don't need two meta tags, uh, an open meta and a closed meta, you can just put them all in one line and use this shortcut. Uh, here the title, you, you have the standard title and title. Okay, so let's look at uh, a little bit more of the structure. So we have HTML, you're going to have a head and a body. You always have those two. You're always going to have both of those things. So you know, I'm just going to get rid of all this other stuff here. Right. And uh, I get rid of that comment. And if I get rid of all this stuff in here, and this is the basic. Uh, whoops! I got rid of the end body. Put that back in. So this is the basic HTML document, right? So this is what you're going to start with. I'm going to save that. Uh, if I go and open that again, uh, I get nothing, right? Well, that's not surprising because the document doesn't say anything. Right? Um, so you know, notice I am indeed opening in test.html, but there's nothing there. Um, so how can I, if I added something here, like hello, I save it, and I go over here and reload it, and then sure enough, I get hello. Okay. So um, let me. Uh, I'm going to take this, open this file in another tab here so that we can you know, look at that. And here we're going to look at the slides. So um, back to the structure. So we have HTML, a head, and a body. Now the head, uh, it gives us meta information about the file. Right? So in this case, um, it's telling us that we're using the meta tag to say that the descri a description for this file is this. So uh, it's telling us that this is just a sample page. Uh, description meta attribute, uh, which is what this is, this line here, this is used by, uh, for example, Google to uh, display short summaries of a site to the user. So somebody goes searches in Google, finds this page, Google might give them this as a summary of that page uh, in the, the little snippet they show them. Uh, then we have the title. This is very important. The title, let me just put it here. So, uh, title there. And uh, this is the title. I save that. I'm going to go here to my second tag and reload it. And you can see it still says hello, but what happened up here uh, is this change. It says this is the title. So that's what the title does. Uh, the title is the piece of text that is going to go in the title bar of the window. And uh, this is also important because when you bookmark this page, uh, the title is the name of the bookmark by default. So that's the title. Uh, then we have the link tag. So we have here a link, and this is a link to the style sheet, and this is the file name of the style sheet. We're going to be talking about CSS later on, uh, but this is a CSS style sheet, right? Which is a, it's a whole other different file, and it's stored in the web server, and uh, it gets loaded uh, after this HTML page. So this is the link that tells the browser, hey, there's this style sheet here for this page. You should go and get it. Uh, this next one is also popular. This is the uh, the shortcut icon, right? Right here, if you notice up here, 
you see the letters JV, this is one of those little it's a fab icon uh, and uh, that's what it's telling it, it's telling it the, the icon for this page is in this file called icon.ico uh, and it's the shortcut icon and so the browser if depending on some browsers don't support this but mo most of them do nowadays so if the browser supports icons it's going to go fetch this file and use it in the case of Firefox we're using the icon here and here okay so that's the head and this other stuff that go you can put in there and we'll, you'll learn a lot about that as you go along next line here is a comment and so in yellow we see a comment that says this is a comment it will not appear on the browser so this comment will not appear on the browser the comments start with angle bracket uh, exclamation mark dash dash and end with dash dash angle bracket so these are comments for you for your code so that you know you remember uh, what you were doing and then after that finally we get to the body the body is what is actually shown to the user uh, in the so we have a, here an example H1 sample. I'm going to put that in here. So I typed in hello before. Now I'm going to uh, add an H1 tag and I'm going to write the word test in there. Save that. Go back here and reload that. And you see the word test appears, but it's bigger. It's bigger than hello. Right. And that is because. Uh, H1 is a header tag, right? So what the H1 tells the browser is that the stuff in between here and here is a first level header, right? When you read a paper, when you're reading a newspaper, you have headlines. Uh, and then, so you'll have, you start with a big headline, and then within the article, you might have uh, smaller headlines, right? So that's that's what this does, right? So H1 is sort of your biggest headline, and then H2 is a smaller headline, and uh, H3 is even smaller, even smaller. Save that uh, and reload then. So smaller and even smaller. In this case, they don't look. Uh, any smaller, so it really depends on your the style you're using. Uh, but generally, as you get smaller, they're going to get smaller. And oh, wait a minute, that's why. Yeah, okay, so it's a little bit smaller. I guess it's hard to tell. Uh, so this is a little bit smaller than this one, which is smaller than that one. So that's the H tag, and they're very useful for headers and uh, organizing information. Uh, then we have uh, the P tag. So the P tag is to be used around paragraphs. So this is a paragraph. And here. I'm going to save that. Reload that. And this is a paragraph. It's just going to look like normal text. Um, the difference will be, um, I'm going to copy that, paste, and uh, paste that a bunch of times there so you can see what it does. Uh, and reload, uh, it just flows it like a regular paragraph. And uh, if you have another paragraph, let's, there's the word hello, but really you shouldn't do that. You should put everything within a paragraph like that. I save that. I'm going to reload that. It looks the same. But so you see, you notice that the word hello appears on there here. You know, there's a line in between them. Uh, I can go back here and add a bunch of lines here. I save that. And when I reload this, notice that nothing, nothing happens. Right? So uh, the browser ignores all the white space you put in here. This is very important. Get new people get confused with this a lot. But yeah, the browser will in ignore any return statements or any white space uh, you might add here. I'm going to add, um, I'll put that, let's put it on the first sentence. This, I'm going to add a bunch of spaces there. Save that. Reload it. Nothing changed. 
see? Uh, so the browser ignores any white space you add and just collapses it back in. And this is and very important. A lot of people are new to it, miss it, and then they wonder how, um, you know, what's going on. So um, if you do want a space like this, right? So you don't want all that in one paragraph. What you do, of course, is add a close tag here, add an open tag here. Oops, an open tag there. And uh, so now what ha is going to happen here is I'm just going to move this back up. Uh, this tag here, you know, matches this one here. Right. So that one, that P matches this NP down here, and then that P there matches this NP here. See? And then the P here and the hello there. Uh, and we can reload that, and now you see we have two paragraphs, well, three. So we split that paragraph into two. And that's how you can get it. So you, you have to remember that, that. If you want white space, if you want blank lines, you have to use the P. Uh, or there's also another tag, the BR tag, and that one will break a line. It's a break. So if you're in here, I can put a B tag there. Notice that this one, the BR tag, ends in a slash, right? So it doesn't, you don't put anything in between it. All it does is it works, the BR tag it works a lot like just hit and enter, right? So it's just gonna create a new line there. I'm gonna reload this and show you. You see, so I put the BR tag right here and uh, it's just like hitting enter, you move to the next line. And if I wanted this one also to appear by itself, I just add another BR tag there there. Done. Okay. okay. So we got the BR tag and the P tag. Those are the two main, you know, flow tags. Uh, the UL and LI tags are for lists. So if I have a list here, I can add a UL tag and then an LI tag and say item one and, uh, oops, item uh, second item let's put a third item third item I'm gonna save that reload it oh, reload it and there you see so the UL tag creates a list so you have the UL starts the list and then each item in the list has to appear uh, within li tag. So you have ul and then li item 1, li item 2, li third item. If I change, there's a similar tag called the ol tag, so I can change the ul to ol, save that, reload, and you see they get numbered. I get 1, 2, 3. So ol is for ordered list. ul means unordered list. And that's how you do lists. So we got that, we got that one. Now if you want to change how the text looks a little bit, um, so common tag to use is B. So if you want something in bold face, you put it in between B and NB. Reload and you see now paragraph is in bold face. This is a paragraph, right? and if I want the word "is" to be uh, in italic, I can put it within uh, the i tag and cut that there. Put that there in here. Save it. Reload it. See the word "is" is now in italics. Uh, I can do that. Uh, not not for the title, but. Uh, for here, I can say I. I'm gonna move. Um, cut that. Oops. I'm gonna cut the end tag there. I'll put it at the end here. Save it. Reload it, and you see it turn into italics. Okay. 
So that's the I tag and the B tag, right? The I turns things into italics, B makes them into the bold face. Uh, and then, and of course, there's the hyperlink. So the hyperlink tag is A. Right? So we have A and A, and uh, it has an attribute here called href, uh, which is the URL, right? So this is going to create a link to my home page. Uh, I'm just going to take that, put it over here. Um, paste it there, save it, and reload it, and you can see hyperlink is now a link. If you see down, look at down here, when I go over, you can see that it, that's going to be a hyperlink. If I click on that, it's going to go to my home page. Um, that's how you create it. So what you do is you put the text that you want underlined here in between the A, the open A and the close A, and the URL is the value of the href attribute. Okay, and that's how you make hyperlinks. Uh, and, uh, and the image, this is how you put in an image. Similarly, we're going to show that a little bit later also. I'll show a better example of that. So, those are some of the basic tags. Um, as I'm talking about this, um, it's important to keep in mind uh, that language is very important. Uh, so here's a little bit of HTML. Uh, this whole thing here, uh, from the left bracket to here, near the whole line, is an element. Right? So we say this is that the A element in this case, because that's the tag. Uh, the letter A itself is the tag. Right? So the tag is just the letter. Uh, the P tag, we have the P tag, we just I just show you the H1 tag, the H2 tag, etc. So the tag is only the letter. The A element is the whole thing, which includes the word Carolina and the href and the URL. Uh, the href, this is an attribute. Right? So the thing that comes right after the angle bracket, uh, that is the tag, and then all the other ones are attributes. And each attribute has a value. Right? So in this case, the value is this URL right here. Uh, the value of href is http www.sc.edu. Uh, and that's an attribute. So it's very important to know. So do not, if you say, oh, it's the A attribute. Well, no, there, there is no such thing as the A attribute. It's either the A tag or the element A. There is no A attribute. Similarly, there is no href element or href tag. Um, so I'm going to try to stick to that. You know, hope it, It's kind of hard. Sometimes one makes mistakes. So I'll try to keep an eye on mine and try to use the names properly because these are the proper names that we should all be using. Uh, the links. I just showed you the link. Uh, a little bit more about those. Uh, so the href is the attribute that holds um, the value, which is the URL. Um, but those URLs can be either absolute, as we showed you before, or they could be relative, right? So uh, I don't have to start with HTTP all the time. I could just say href equals uh, dot dot slash dot dot slash index.html. And what this means is uh, load the page. Well, I'll just show you an example. So I could, in here, I could say href equals dot dot slash dot dot slash, um, you know, a home page HTML. So what this would do, oops, what this would do is it would, um, when the user clicks on hyperlink, it's going to try to load the web page that is two pages up from here and call homepage.html. So let me go save that. I'll show you. Uh, so here it is. I'm going to reload that now. If I go here, I am, look at the, the URL. It's file c slash user jmvidal documents test. And I go over hyperlink here. Uh, if you look at, look at down here, it says I'm going to try to load file 
c slash user slash homepage.html. Right, so we're trying to go in right now. This file test.html is under the documents folder, and so with this hyperlink because it has dot dot slash dot dot, it tries to go uh, up two folders. So it goes up to the uh, JM Vidal folder and then goes up to the users folder, and in that folder it tries to find uh, the homepage.html. So if I clicked on that, it's going to try. The browser will look for that file cc slash user slash homepage dot html uh, which fortunately doesn't exist so we get an error um, okay so so those are absolute those are relative links now relative links are very useful actually um, because you know, when you set up a website uh, you uh, you don't you don't want to have you want to minimize your absolute links uh, and what you want to use relative links like these ones uh, because what that helps you with is it makes it really easy to move your website. So say you are at sd.edu and you decide, oh, now we have to move all the web pages to, you know, www.sd.edu. Well, if you used relative uh, URLs, then you could just move all the files with a move command in your you know, operating system and you'll be done. You don't have to actually change any of the HTML. But if you had hard coded HTTP slash slash sc.edu into all your web pages, now you can't move it. So if you want to move it, and if you use absolute URLs, whenever you move the website, now you have to go through all your HTML files and change um, the host name. So try to use relative URLs as much as possible. Uh, so a link can have a title. Um, so we can say a title equals next page and href uh, next HTML. So the title it becomes a, a pop-up. See, uh, just like that. So this is a link that has a pop-up. Uh, I'm gonna put a title here. So I'm gonna say title equals. Uh, as this is my pop-up. Then we're gonna reload that, and when I hover over that. There it is. This is my pop-up. So that's what the title is for. And uh, we also have uh, anchor. So a the a tag can also have an attribute that is the name. Right. Uh, so you can also have something that says. Uh, let's put it down here. At the end, I'm going to say a name equals end of file. Doesn't need to have anything in it. I'll save that, and uh, when I reload that, it doesn't do anything. Um, but what that means is that now I can use um, that, and uh, it's hard to see here because this is too small. So uh, let me add a bunch of br tags here to make this longer. You'll see why in a second. So I'm going to reload that. Okay, so now we I have to scroll down a little bit. So I'm going to hit that. Um, I think I need a little more. Whoops. What did I do? Uh, add a bunch of these here. V, V. Save that. Reload it. And a file. Let's see. So you see, if I jump to the end, so I'll just show it that again. If I go test to this URL, it shows me the web page. If I go test, uh, use hash end of file, it jumps right to the end. So it's going to jump right to where that end of file name appears, which is in this case at the end of the file. Uh, so that's what the name is for. 
right? So we use these names so that we can have these uh, special URLs. And we, you also see how we use those later on in the course uh, with JavaScript. So to summarize, uh, we talked about P is for paragraph. The H1, H2, H3, and so forth tags are for the headings. Uh, the site one we haven't talked about, that's for if you want to do inline citations. Um, block quote is for quotes uh, where you're quoting somebody else. And uh, those appear as indented text. Let me do an example right here. So I'm going to get rid of these. Say over come over here and I do a block quote. Um, once upon a time. Say that. Reload it and you see once upon a time appears uh, it's indented a lot more than a paragraph and there's also extra space out at the top and at the bottom. Just like a, a quote would be. That's block quote. Uh, code you use the displays the text in a fixed width font. Um, so if I want uh, that once upon a time, um, the ten print hello. I'm gonna reload that. You see that the code part appears in a different font. It's a fixed width font. Uh, make that a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. So the code appears in a fixed width font. Uh, uh, pre uh, also uses a fixed width font, but prefer preserves new lines. So if we go, you know, we have this all this these three lines here, which you know appear get. Uh, flow together. Uh, if we added a pre around them, however, uh, what's going to happen? So here they are all flowing together. I'm going to reload this. And that's what happened. So the pre is going to add a tab a little bit longer, add a bigger tab from the left. It's going to use a fixed width font. And also it's going to preserve the carriage return, so the new lines here. right? So the things don't flow together. And I can also, if I added two spaces there, I reload that, I would see the two spaces there. Okay. So it's unlike the regular, where everything gets flowed together, white spaces are ignored. When you are within a pre-tag, uh, spaces and white spaces not ignored. They're used. So what's the next one? And then sub and sub. So this is a subscript, subscript, and a superscript, and then center is also centers the text. Uh, so those are also useful, and there's a bunch more. Uh, okay, HTML tables. Here's an example of an HTML table. I'm gonna go back and just get rid of all this. Uh, we'll keep that one there. I'm just going to get rid of all this for now. And then I'm just going to cut and paste this table here. You can see this is what it's going to look like. So I save it. And then I'm going to reload this. Let's see. So this is a table. That's what it looks like. Now let's look at the HTML used to produce it. So fairly simple. Right? So you start with a table tag. And then you have uh, a table head and a table body. Right? This is just like the head and body of the HTML document. Except that here the head is, is really the first row. Or you could have more than one, but generally the head is just going to be the first row. Uh, remember this is so uh, it's this row here. Date, topic, other headings, and homework. So within the head, we have a row, TR. The R stands for a row. And then the TH is for a heading data. So that's going to be date, topic, other readings, and homework. So basically, you're going to go start at the top left 
and go left to right and then to one row to the next row the next row the next row so we first do the first row going from left to right each element is within a th block then we do the body uh, first row and here are the elements of the first row January 13 class overview January 13 class overview chapter 1 and then etc um, so that's it um, the thing to remember is you have a table a head and a body and a, a row and an age now you don't need you actually don't need a head and a body you can just go table row and that's how you will s often see that the reason you have a head uh, for example is if you have a very long table uh, that's gonna it's gonna go down for many pages uh, then you print it out uh, if you if you use the head, some browsers, most browsers really will are, are smart enough to reproduce the head on every page, right? So you can have a long table that shows up here with only one head here, but uh, this head will, when you print it out to the printer, it will get repeated on all the other pages. Um, uh, what else? So the the table has various attributes. You can look it up. Uh, align is a good one. Align will center the table. Well, align is either center left right. Will tell you how to align the table. Uh, and border if you want a border. Here we have a border around the table. I might not want one, so I could change that. If I got get rid of that, so I get rid of that. I reload, and now there's no border. It doesn't look as pretty. Uh, the uh, the no wrap. Uh, you notice that. Uh, so here I'm looking at the, the no wrap attribute. So you notice that the the width. Uh, let me put the uh, the border back on so this is easier to see. So you notice that this column here is wider than these other ones, and they're not all the same size, right? And uh, nowhere, he, nowhere in here, you know, do we specify the width of the columns, right? So what happens is the browser does that automatically, and you can, if you want, you can specify a width. So you can specify a width um, attribute. And I uh, see we just made topic a little bit shorter. Um, it, it won't go. It's actually a 10, which is a lot smaller than that. But it won't go any smaller than 10. So let's make it bigger. Um, so you see, we can make it bigger. We can if we want to specify. But if you don't specify, it'll try to pick um, a, a good width. And uh, most browsers are pretty good about doing that. Uh, the no wrap attribute that we see here next to the January 13, what this is telling it is that uh, you know that there's a space here between January and 13, and uh, it could be that you know without the no wrap we could have January in one line and 13 in the next line, like we have class here in one line and overview in the other line, and that just wouldn't look right, right? So you don't want January and 13 below. So I specified that this. Uh, data element cannot be wrapped. That has to be all in one line. Uh, okay. So uh, that's it for table. Tables are used a lot uh, for doing, uh, setting up a web page and uh, uh, doing the various boxes in it, right? So for layout. Now in this days of CSS, you know, some table layout is frowned upon. Uh, so there's there are a lot of things that you can do with CSS that are really better done with CSS than with t with tables. But uh, people still use tables. Uh, you see it often used, and um, uh, they're very useful. So you know what, what I'm what I'm saying is that if you go to a website, you know, like CNN.com, you'll see basically, uh, or even our 
university website, you see sort of boxes. This is a box here and a box here and another box here with sub boxes in it. So you can sort of see that this is a table or it could be a table with sub where some cells are other you know tables within tables, etc. And that is how this whole thing is built up, right? Um, so, but moving on. Uh, div and spam. So there's two other tags that we used a lot, especially uh, we're going to be using them a lot when we do uh, JavaScript. Uh, they're called the div and the span tag. And uh, again, I'm going to go back here and get rid of that table and just add this is some text that we are using for testing and so I'm going to take all that and copy it and just paste it a bunch of times there okay so there it is uh, put that in between a p tag uh, and p save that and then I'm going to reload that here there it is so it's just a bunch of text uh, so the I can say span hello how are you And uh, you can see the text there, hello, how are you? The span tag is gone. So the span tag by itself doesn't do anything, right? Uh, it is, however, useful, and we're going to use it later on um, for uh, when we do a dynamic HTML. We're going to be using the span tag to pick specific text, right? Uh, the div tag is also similar. So I can add a div tag there. And then I'm gonna move this there, save it, reload it. So the div tag is there too, similar, but it does add uh, a new line, right? So you don't see the div tag here. What you see though is that the text that's within the div tag you know is some text that we are uh appears in a new line and really in a new paragraph so uh what this is saying that div defines a block while span is inline there's two ways uh that h t m l gets laid out right so when your browser gets all this h t m l it starts to lay it out from left to right right it's just text. And in English, we write from left to right, then move to the next line, left to right, and move to the next line. At some point, however, we, we reach, say, a P, a paragraph. And uh, so if we were to reach a P or maybe a BR at some point, say at this point here, then we would uh, stop flowing and move to the next line. Right. So inline text inline text is stuff that gets flown in, flowed from left to right. Uh, block elements create a new line and then get added. Right. So that's why the div is a block element and so when you use the div it's going to automatically create a new line and then add itself. It creates this new line and then its contents are added. Uh, this is important again because it leads to both of them are invisible by default uh, both of them are used, you know, both of them, meaning div and span, are both used to group together elements. Uh, but the span, you're going to use that when you want to group together text that then you want to put in uh, within a block of text, while the div, you're going to use for elements that really stand out by themselves as their own paragraph. Um, you're going to be using the class attribute in, in CSS. Uh, to do some of this stuff. So we'll talk about that later. Uh, images are pretty straightforward. You use the image tag. Then you have the source attribute. The value of the source attribute is a URL 
uh, to the file uh, that contains the image. You can use JPEGs or PNGs or any no other number of uh, formats. And so here, this is the HTML, which is the image source, this tag, and this is the image. Um, this is how it will look. So it just puts the image right there. Uh, your browser first is going to load and the HTML file and then the images, right? So when you load this HTML file, browser first gets this whole HTML file, reads it all, starts to display some of the text. Then if it finds in there some image tag with a URL, it's going to go and fetch that image, right? It's going to get this URL and do that, get that image. That's the second step. And if you have, you know, a hundred images, it's going to do that a hundred times. So you generally want to minimize the number of images that are in your website. And uh, one trick we'll talk about later on is uh, by you can put all the images into one big image and uh, use some CSS trick to uh, just show only the part of that image that you want. Um, so back to the image tag. The image tag also has a bunch of attributes uh, with it's a good one, so you want to control the width of the image. You can say image width equals, in this case, 200. So that means it's going to be 200 pixels wide. And uh, the height is going to be adjusted accordingly to keep the same aspect ratio. Or you could have specified height also and just change uh, the image. Uh, notice that when you do this, the uh, browser downloads the original image and then resizes it. So the browser resizes the image, which means that you have no control. Sometimes um, some browsers are better at resizing than others, so you might get images that are not as good uh, as you might otherwise. So generally it's better uh, if you're going to be doing this a lot to you yourself resize all the images and download them at the right size. Um, the image tag Character references are also uh, used a lot. Uh, these are used for typing in those things that you cannot normally type in, like the less than uh, symbol. So uh, there is no less than symbol. If you type, you know, the less than symbol, you would the browser would try to interpret that as a tag, right? So if you type less than h, it would think, well, you know, maybe that's a tag. So if you want to type in the less than symbol, you have to use ampersand, LT, and then a semicolon. Uh, for the greater than symbol is ampersand, GT, semicolon. Uh, and then there's a bunch of other ones. There's the pound, the English pound, the euro, copyright, accents, degrees. Uh, a little bit on quotes. You can do uh, left double quotes and right double quotes if you look carefully here. Um, make that bigger. So you can see that the l here he said the l this quote is different from that one. And that's the way it should be, right? So if you want to do that, you can't really get that from your keyboard. You have to use ampersand LD quo for the left quote and ampersand RD quo for the right quote. Uh, there's also dashes. There's, if you know a little bit typography, you know there's three types of dashes. There's the little dash, the medium sized dash, and the M, the long dash, also known as the dash, N dash, or and M dash. So the simple dash, you get that with just typing the dash in your keyboard. Uh, the N dash, which is used for you know page ranges, is ampersand N dash. Then the M dash, the big one you use uh, in sentences, that's the ampersand M dash. And finally, if you want to type the ampersand itself, you use ampersand amp semicolon. And here's a link to all the entities. Uh, this is a page at the W3C, and uh, I list all the various entities. There's a, there's a bunch of them, uh, and you should take a look because uh, um, they have all kinds of languages. Uh, Greek uh, letters are also very useful in doing physics and math and uh, some other general punctuations. So I'll take a look at them. Uh, so important, some important attributes, like I said, 
talked to you about before, the title attribute is can be used really with any element. So these are attributes that can be used with any element. The title attribute uh, is the pop-up text, right? So here I have an example. I'll, I showed this before. So here's the h tag. href is this URL has a title of University of South Carolina. So that means this is going to create, you know, the, the value is USC. Uh, so it's going to create this. When I hover over that, it's going to say University of South Carolina. Uh, that's the title. Uh, there's other two ones that we're going to be using a lot, although for now they don't do much or anything. There's the name and ID attributes. So the name ID, the name attribute is going to group some elements under a particular name and the ID attribute gives a unique ID to the element. So the main difference is that so all, all elements in the document can have name and ID attributes. Uh, but the w one big difference is the value of the ID attributes has to be unique. So there cannot be two elements in a document with the same ID value. Right? Uh, however, you can have multiple with the same name. And uh, you can use, one way you can use them right now is, as I showed before, using after the hash. So if you get something, the uh, the name of uh, overview, so you say name equals overview, you can then use the following URL to get it. Uh, so it's not terribly useful, not really very useful at all right now, but when we get to JavaScript, you're going to be using the names and IDs a lot. So it's important to know those. Okay, forms. I'm going to make this smaller. Um, view. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see this better. Right, so there it is. Uh, this is a form. Uh, so a form. This is the HTML for a form. It says form, n form, and then within a form you can have any kind of HTML. The form has an action attribute uh, and a method attribute. The action attribute has a value which is the URL, and the method is going to be either get or post. And then within the form, there's uh, other types of tags that you use, namely uh, the input tags. So the input are going to be the various ways that the user can input. Uh, so you have input type text, query. Right. So this is this text box. So this input here is going to create this text box. The word query is here, query, query. And then we have some radio buttons. Um, are down here. So what this is going to do is we can type in JavaScript and uh, English and uh, I want to show the URL up there and when I hit send you see input type submit value send so this input element is this button here and then this one is the reset so when I hit send it's going to go and look up here. Uh, it's going to go to google.com slash search question mark q equals JavaScript and lr equals uh, language underscore English en. Right. So what happened there? So what happened is, let me show you. So you see the action is google.com slash search. Right. And uh, the query has a name of Q. Um, and uh, these guys here, the radio buttons, have a name, all have the same name, LR, LR, LR. So what happens is you type in a query, JavaScript, whatever the user types in, that's going to get submitted to this URL up here uh, with uh, after the Q. Right? So I typed in JavaScript, I hit send and it's saying Q equals JavaScript. Right? So Q is going to get whatever the user types in and LR 
it's going to get whatever language the user type in. So if the user clicks on Japanese, submit again, LR equals language underscore JA. Right? So that's, that is what a form does. A form is basically an automatic way for the browser uh, to build a more complicated URL. Right? So this is sort of the base of the URL and then these other names get added at the end. Uh, so you're going to have the URL, the browser is going to add a question mark after that and then it's going to add the name and then the equal sign and then whatever the user typed in then ampersand and the name the equal sign and whatever the user typed in right. so uh, forms are a way of turning taking what the user types in and creating a new complicated you know longer URL and uh, doing a get on it you can also do a post we'll remember so this could be also be a post uh, which is especially useful if you have uh, some of these are uh, input boxes or you know long long areas so there's a lot of text because remember the URL can only be uh, uh, so big you can't you can't make really long URLs uh, so those are the forms and we're going to be using those a lot again there's more than just uh, text boxes and radio buttons uh, and submit buttons uh, you have other types of inputs uh, so you should uh, go and look at those. Uh, now we have the iframe. This has become fairly popular later on. Uh, so an iframe is, is a simple tag. It says iframe. You can give it a width and a height if you want. And then there's a source attribute whose value is some other web page. right? So all it does is, so this is the source code and this is what it does here. This is another website called Stack Overflow. And what we're doing here is we're creating a window that's 400 pixels by 400 pixels. And within that window, we're placing that website. Uh, it could be any web page. Um, you can see it gives me a little scroll bar so I can see the whole website. It's kind of hard to see uh, with only 400 by 400. Uh, but this is used a lot, especially in this age of mashups and you know, uh, bringing in information from other websites. So. Uh, it's a very common technique. Okay, so once you have all your HTML, uh, you want to validate it. So you, a good way to test your HTML is to go to validator.w3.org, and uh, you can input the URL of your document, uh, and it will validate it. Um, so you can see in these these slides of mine. Uh, you can see my name is down here. That's a link to my web page, but there's a period right there. And uh, that is actually a link to the validator to check uh, this web page. So if you click on that, uh, what it does is it submits this web page to the validator. And uh, sure enough, uh, my, my web page validates as XHTML 1.0. Um, if there were errors, it would tell you what the errors were. I say, and this line has an error, uh, etc. And you can go fix it. Uh, so that's very useful because you want to make sure that your HTML is validated. And uh, in general, this is also a nice thing to have. You know, you can add this automatically to all your web pages. So there's a simple way of uh, validating all your web pages uh, from the web browser. Uh, so okay, a little bit about XHTML. So uh, XHTML is, is what we've been talking about so far. Uh, but it's uh, it's different from HTML. So in, in the beginning, there was HTML, which evolved over the years uh, as the browsers got better and added more and more tags to it. Uh, XHTML was developed later, and the idea there uh, is that XHTML is going to be well-formed XML document. Um, so it's really a subset of HTML. Um, and uh, it uh, is a nice language that can be written to and understood by older browsers. Um, and uh, another nice thing is it can be used by applications that rely on the uh, HTML DOM uh, on or the uh, XML DOM. Uh, 
Uh, we will like XTML because it's based on XML, so it's extensible. We can add stuff to it, right? We can extend it. Um, so this is uh, in order to build an XHTML file different from a HTML. Uh, you must again, you must still have start with the HTML document, but you also want to have this uh, after the HTML document. You want to have this XMLNS attribute uh, with this value here, which is the uh, points to the HTML document, and you must have a doc document type just like with the HTML. So the main difference is that the new namespace. Um, and uh, so one of the nice things you can do with the extensibility is you can you know, expand the language. So this is a math ML, um, so which is an extension on HTML, and it's for you know, doing mathematical notation. So this this well, you see here, this is the integral of e to the x. You see this nice integral symbol here. Uh, this is was done using this code down here. You know the math part, right? So if you look at your view source on this, uh, you'll see this. Uh, and uh, this is uh, an extension of of uh, a really new language, but it's an extension of uh, XML. And uh, it's called Math XML, and uh, this defines these new tags MO, MSUP, and MI, and um, so it defines a whole new mathematical language that, uh, in this case, Firefox uh, can display. So that's the kind of stuff that you can do, and there's also uh, graphical languages that you can use uh, for displaying inline graphics like that, and uh, we'll be talking about that later on. Uh, so some of the differences with like HTML, you, you must be well formed. Uh, you want your HTML to be well formed too. Uh, everything is in lowercase, so HTML allows you to have some of these tags in uppercase. You notice I've been using lowercase all the time, uh, but all HTML you'll notice that has it has uses uppercase. Uh, you have to use n tags, so you have to use that or that, but you can't just use the p, which you can in HTML. So in HTML, you can just have P without the NP. Uh, and then the attributes must be quoted. So in XHTML, you must have rowspan equals one, quote one, right? So rowspan equals quote one, not rowspan equals one without the quotes, which you can do in HTML. And similarly, you c in uh, XHTML, you can't have stuff like DL compact, you can't have an attribute without a value. You have to have an attribute with a value. So what they did is they took this compact attribute and made it into compact equals compact. So this is HTML and this is XHTML equivalent. Okay, so that ends uh, the talk. Uh, obviously we didn't cover all of HTML. Uh, there is the language is very large and it has a lot of tags, uh, but I think we covered all the main tags that uh, we will be using. Nonetheless, um, there's a lot of stuff missing, and so I recommend uh, that you go buy a book such as this one, uh, an HTML reference, and uh, go over it. So just read it or skim it over it, just looking at all the tags. So you'll you'll see there are all kinds of tags that do. Uh, all kinds of things. Again, we've covered the ones that are used 80% of the time, 90% of the time, but sometimes you need those other tags. So go there, you know, I recommend that. Uh, when programming, I always use uh, goapi.com. So this is a nice website uh, that puts together all the various APIs. So when you go there, you get this page. And you see here on the left, these are all, all the HTML tags, I believe. Um, so from A to from A to U, uh, actually, <laughs> um, yeah, from A to var. Uh, so there's all the HTML, t and you can just click on it. You know, you want to hear about block code, you can click on it. You get a description of the block quote tag uh, with some examples on how to use it, etc. You can do a search. So if you search for the ABBR tag, 
uh, you get that on. so it's very nice and this is a very nice website because it, it, uh, this is I think is really good when doing web development because it puts together uh, HTML, JavaScript, CSS so if you want to search later on we're going to be doing JavaScript so uh, if you want to search JavaScript in there uh, we can do that uh, you can do get elements by ID and we'll give you this function of that function and similarly CSS we're going to be doing that you want to search CSS it's all right here uh, all the various CSS uh, styles and and uh, there's even more if you click or start uh, lets you choose so uh, right now I'm just showing HTML CSS and JavaScript uh, but you can you know there's has link you can also add prototype and these are some of the JavaScript libraries uh, which we're going to be using later on in class and Python and Java and uh, all these other uh, APIs so uh, Pretty much, I always keep this window open uh, when doing uh, development. Uh, it's very handy. So, gotapi.com. Uh, so, I think that's it uh, for today. And uh, like I said, you know, this is not enough. You, can't, uh, you should now go home and uh, you know, fire up your uh, text editor, your programmer's editor, and uh, start trying out some tags and. Uh, start trying out some new uh, building some HTML pages. I'll see you in class.